Today we're going to talk about characteristics and attributes of functions. And the first thing we're going to do is describe where a function is increasing and decreasing. So a function is increasing when the y values get larger from left to right. Now this may look like this or even something like this or even something like this on your graph. It may be curved, concave. A function is decreasing when the y values get smaller from left to right. So this may look like this. Obviously, that's linear, negative slope. As x increases, the y values will decrease. It also might look something like that, or it might look something like that. Anytime you see a graph that looks like that over a given interval, it is decreasing. So how can we notate, how can we write where a function is increasing and decreasing, we will use intervals using the domain. What's domain? It is the set of x values. So what about the points where the function changes direction? So let's say you have a function that looks like this. Obviously, it's, it's increasing right here. It's decreasing right here. Well, what about this point up here? Increasing and decreasing intervals are always exclusive of the endpoints means we exclude those endpoints, which means we'll use parentheses when we write an interval notation. So when you're describing where a function is increasing or decreasing, and we'll just, we're just describing, we're talking about its characteristics, we will use parentheses because we're going to exclude those points. So I'm actually going to go to the next page and we're going to first go through each of these examples we're going to list the domain range and where the function is increasing and decreasing. And then I'll talk about positive and negative next because today's lesson can actually be really overwhelming and you may even want to break it out into two parts. So let's look at problem number one. And this so let's look at example number one. The first thing we're going to do is identify our domain and our range. So our domain is our set of all x values. So Right here in number one, we have this V-shaped function and we have endpoints. And the furthest endpoint to the left is at negative six, five. Negative six, five. And the furthest endpoint to the right is at positive four, five. So if I'm looking at my, how far left to how far right this function goes, we're looking at our X values. So our x values are from negative 6 to positive 4. So negative 6 being the furthest point to the left, positive 4 being the furthest point to the right. Do I include negative 6? I do, so I'm going to use a bracket and parentheses for positive 4. Now when we talk about our range, we're talking about our set of all y values, how far low to how far high. So our lowest point right down here is at negative 1, negative 1. When we're talking about our range, this is the only time we're going to use our y values to identify our range. So our y values, we go from low to high. The lowest point is at negative 1, and the highest point is at positive 5. So our range is from negative 1 to positive 5. Do we include that point at negative 1? We sure do. So we're going to use a bracket. Do we include the point at where y is 5? We sure do because we have a closed dot over here. So we include both of those. So now let's look at our where this function is increasing and decreasing, the intervals where it's increasing and decreasing. So it's increasing from this point right here to this point up here. That's where our function is increasing. As x gets bigger, the y values get bigger as well. So when we identify where a function is increasing and decreasing, we're going to identify it using the domain. So we're going to use the x values for the interval where that function is increasing. So this function is increasing from negative 1 to positive 4. From negative 1 to positive 4, and since we're identifying where the function is increasing and decreasing, we always use parentheses. So now let's look at where the function is decreasing. It's decreasing from negative 6 to negative 1. And will you always write your intervals from left to right or from least to greatest. So from negative 6 
to negative 1, and because this is where our function is decreasing, we're going to use parentheses. So now let's talk about, or actually let's move on to number 2, and let's do domain range increasing and decreasing. We'll come back and we'll do positive negative for 1, 2, and 3. So let's go down to number 2. For number 2, let's identify the domain and the range. I'm going to change colors here. So our domain, how far left, how far right? So our most leftest point on this function is right here. What is that point? It's at negative 6, positive 1. Do we have a most right, rightest point? I know these aren't words. I'm just making this up, but you get what I'm saying. I don't because I have an arrow on the end, which means it's going to go up and out forever and ever and ever to positive infinity on my x-axis to positive infinity on my y-axis. So what's my domain? It's from negative 6 to infinity. Brackets or parentheses at negative 6. Brackets, and then what do we always use when we're identifying or when we're talking about infinity and negative infinity? We use parentheses. So now let's talk about our range, how far low to how far high. So here is our lowest point on this function. That ordered pair is 3, negative 2. That's our lowest point. What's our highest point? Our highest point is infinity. It's going to go on forever and ever and ever and ever. So our range, remember, this is the only time you're going to use your y values when you identify any characteristics or when you're talking about characteristics and attributes of functions. So our range is from negative 2 all the way to infinity. Brackets or parentheses when y is negative 2. Bracket because this point is included in our function. And then parentheses for infinity. So now let's move on to where this function is increasing and decreasing. So it's actually increasing during a couple intervals here. It's increasing from negative 6 to up to this point right up here. What is that point? It's at negative 3, positive 6. So negative 3, positive 6. This is the interval where this function is increasing. And it doesn't matter that it's curved. It's just as the x values get bigger, so do the y values. So you can have curves where a function is increasing and decreasing. So from the interval, negative 6 to negative 3, do you see how I wrote that? Negative 6 to negative 3. I'm using my x values. During that interval, during that domain, is where our function is increasing. Increasing, we always use parentheses. Now it's also increasing right here from positive 3 all the way to infinity. It's going to keep going up forever and ever and ever and keep going out forever and ever and ever to this positive infinity over here. So where is this function also increasing? From positive 3 to infinity. So when we identify where this function is increasing and decreasing, it's increasing during this interval from negative 6 to 3 or this interval from 3 to infinity. So we're going to use that union symbol. That will indicate or right there. Okay, It can be this interval or that interval. So now let's look at where the function is decreasing. And I'm going to change colors here again. Goodness gracious. Right. Let's use this color. So now it's decreasing during this interval right here from negative 3 to positive 3. So it's decreasing just during this one interval from negative 3 to positive 3. That's the domain where this function is decreasing. So again, I'm using my x values. And because this is where the function is decreasing, I'm going to use parentheses. So let's move on to number 3. Again, we'll go back and talk about positive and negative. So number 3, and I know it looks kind of, uh, my writing looks kind of jacked, just kind of messed up. Microsoft did an update, so this new Microsoft Edge doesn't really write as pretty as it did with the legacy, Edge legacy. So hopefully they'll do another update and they'll fix it. So right here, this is a quadratic function, and when we identify our domain, 
Well, you can see these arrows are going up and out forever and ever and ever. So our domain is actually from negative infinity to positive infinity. It's all real numbers. This is our domain and we'll use parentheses. Now our range, we actually have a minimum value down here. Okay, we have a minimum and that minimum is at negative four, negative five. When we're talking about our range, we want the y value. So our y value, we write from least to greatest or low to high. So you can think about it, low to high, up like that. So negative five all the way up to infinity. Brackets or parentheses when y is negative five. Bracket, that is a y value that is included in this function. And then we always use parentheses when we're talking about or when we use an infinity symbol. So now let's move on to where this function is increasing and decreasing. It's increasing during one interval right here from negative four all the way. And because it goes up and out forever and ever and ever and ever, it's gonna go from negative four to positive infinity. Increasing and decreasing, what do we always use in interval notation? We use parentheses because we cannot identify at a specific point when it's an endpoint if it's increasing or decreasing at that point. It's only in the interval. So where is this function decreasing? Again, I write from least to greatest. So it's gonna be from negative infinity all the way to negative four. Negative infinity to negative four, brackets or parentheses, parentheses. So now let's go back because we kind of have to shift gears here and let's talk about where these functions are positive and negative. Okay, so positive and negative. A function is positive where its y values are positive. This is above the x-axis. So wherever your function is above the x-axis, that's where we would describe it as being positive. It's where the y values are positive. And a function is negative where all the y values are negative, which is below the x-axis. So we're gonna notate positive and negative intervals the same way we do increasing and decreasing. We're gonna use our domain, which means the only time we use our range values or our y values when we're describing a function is when we're describing the range. Everything else, when we're talking about a function and we're describing its characteristics and its attributes, we're using our domain values. So the question is, what about zero? Since zero is neither positive nor negative, we're going to use parentheses. If an endpoint falls where the y value is zero. So let's go back to this first example. On where is this function positive or negative? It's positive during the interval or intervals where the y values are positive. So where are the y values positive? Above this x-axis here. Anything above the x-axis is where this function is going to be positive. And again, when we identify it, we use our domain. So we're gonna be using the x values. So it's positive from this point over here at negative six all the way to this point right here. What is that point? Negative two, zero. So it's positive from negative six to negative two. Now, is it positive at negative six? Yes, it absolutely is. So we're gonna use a bracket. Is it positive at negative two? Well, this y value is zero. Is zero positive or negative? It's neither, it has no value. So we're gonna use parentheses. And because we have another interval where this function is positive, our function is positive in this interval from negative six to negative two, or there's that union symbol, from this point right here, what is that point? It's zero, zero, all the way to when x is four. So from zero to four. At zero, zero, there's no, this right here, that y value has, is not positive nor negative. So parentheses when x is zero. 
And then when x is 4, what do you notice? It's at 5, so we're not going to, or there's a hole there. So I'm going to use parentheses when x is 4. Now let's look at where this function is negative. It's negative during this interval right here. And I'm actually going to change colors again. I know it's a lot, but it kind of helps. Or maybe I'm just confusing you. This interval right here from negative 2 to positive 0. From negative 2 to positive 0, this function, all the y values, are negative during that interval. So from this x-intercept right here to this x-intercept, because they're x-intercepts, they're where the y value is 0. We're not including those points. Let's move on to number 2. So where is this function positive? It's positive during a couple intervals here. So from this point right here, when x is negative 6, all the way to that point right there. What is that point? That point is 1, 0. We're using our domain when we identify this. So from negative 6 to positive 1 is where this function is positive. Is this function positive? when x is negative 6? Yes, there is a filled in dot there. There's not a hole. Okay, so this y value, that point is included in this function, so we're going to put a bracket there. And then because this point over here at 1, 0 is an x-intercept, we're going to use parentheses here. Now it's also, it, the function is positive during that interval or during this interval, 1, 2, 3, 4, when x is 5, all the way, and it's going to keep going up and out forever and ever and ever. So from 5 to infinity, is it increasing at 5? Or I'm sorry, is it positive at 5? No, because 0 has no value. And then we always use parentheses when we, talk, when we include uh, infinity or negative infinity. So now let's change colors again. Which color have I not used? This one right here. Where is this function negative? It's negative during this interval, from this x-intercept to that x-intercept. So from 1 to 5, just one interval from 1 to 5. And we identify that interval by its domain. Because they're my x-intercepts, I'm going to use parentheses. Let's move on to our last problem. Number three, where is this function positive? Where is it negative? It's positive during this interval right here from negative infinity all the way to this x-intercept. What is that x-intercept? It's at negative seven, zero. So from negative infinity all the way to negative seven, because we're using our x value when we talk about this interval, this function is positive. Now, brackets or parentheses during either of those. Parentheses for negative infinity, parentheses for negative 7 because it's an x-intercept. So that y value isn't positive, and it's also not negative, so we're not going to include it. It's also positive during this interval from negative 1, 0, all the way out to infinity. So from negative 1 to infinity, brackets or parentheses parentheses, and then what's the symbol that I use? That or symbol. It's positive during these two intervals. It can be positive from negative infinity to negative 7 or from negative 1 to 0. So in the last part, I'm going to identify where this function is negative. It's negative when our y values are, or this, po this function is negative when our y values are negative. Where are they negative? below the x-axis. So from this interval right here, negative 7 to negative 1, that's where this function is negative, brackets or parentheses. Parentheses. And that concludes your notes over characteristics and attributes of functions. I hope it was helpful.